Bumps and bruises, scratches and scrapes, some of the ingredients that a good life makes. But sorrows become success, and as we aim for the top, we will pause if we must, but we will never stop. Welcome to Sim Soul Sessions. Welcome to Simso Sessions, a safe space to share your stories. Tonight I am sitting with a child star who could now care less whether the world is ever her stage again because gaining her soul is her sole focus. Singer, businesswoman Shereen Anderson is in our big chair tonight. I'm so glad to have you. Hey, Mama. Hiya. How are you? Excellent. How are you? <laughs> I am well. Good, you good. are radiating joy. Um, it's important to note, just for me and for context for the folks who are watching, mm -hmm. that we've been asking you to do this for a little while. <laughs> yes, I may have dodged you. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I said, but you said, Sim, I wasn't dodging you. The right time was just not the right time. Just not the right time. And you say, no, this is the yeah. right time. So tell me why this is the right time. Because I am, how do I put it? I pray a lot. And for me, especially in this season of my life, I need clarity for every step I take. So when I pray about something long enough and I feel a release to do it, that's kind of when I do it. So yeah. I, I, I don't know, you know, you, you, you bought me up. <laughs> <laughs> I said, sure, yeah, dodge me, sure. <laughs> and I, I just felt inside like, yeah, the Holy Spirit was saying, yeah, it's time. Mm -hmm. So it's time. But, um, yeah. but, but really, you have, I want to say a main aim sitting in the chair today. Mm -hmm. You're telling your story because... Well, I'm telling my story, one, because you asked, mm -hmm. <laughs> but two, because I think if my story can free somebody else also to just walk into their own purpose or get even a little bit more clarity on what they need to do, then that's why I'm sent. Mm -hmm. You know, if we hold on to our stories and we don't share, then you could be trapping somebody somewhere, maybe in the middle of Rollington town or downtown or uptown or any town. But somebody just needs to hear something to say, all right, we get that fire lit on the inside of you. Time to move. That's it's why time. I'm sent. That's what you just said. I'm sent. It's a mission. It, it, it absolutely And is. when you speak about trapping, you, like you're speaking from a real place because you've, you've been, been in that prison and now the freedom you feel makes mm -hmm. you want to free other people. Right. And so even when we were talking about the, you coming on the show, you said to me, you know, I just want to talk about how, how good God is and how God can help to. And, and one of your questions was, is it okay if we say that? You know, almost Well, like, well I have to ask. You know, yeah. Sim, Sim, coming up in music and, well, acting is how I started. So coming up in the entertainment industry, if somebody says God or somebody says Jesus, we cannot sanitize it to make them say, oh, no, I'm spiritual. No, I believe in a Jesus, I believe in a God. You know, I, I came up in the music industry where if we jump on stage and somebody believes what they believe, well, I have a flagman them on the stage mm -hmm. and you know, you may be Rastafarian and I, I respect that. Mm -hmm. I have Rastafarians in my family. We're not here to create division. We're here to point you to Christ. Mm -hmm. That's it. And it's, it's not forced. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's not force, it's love. At the end of the day, that's what it is, it's yeah. love, yeah. And there was a time in your career where you had to sanitize, and we're gonna, we're gonna talk about All that. Right. Um, because it kind of was a, a little bit of a shift from how you were raised, because you raised proper, proper, <laughs> Maria <church>. into church. <laughs> um, Barbara. And, and so in 2019, because of a pivotal event, you, you gave your life to Christ, you started but walking. But it was before, it was, be it was a little before. A little before 2019? Yeah, man, it was before okay. 2019. When was it? It was 2018. 18. It was a year before. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, but even in this Christian walk, it's a very interesting walk, right? right. Because you, you said even at church you're telling people, I'm Shereen Anderson. I'm not a gospel singer. So all the things you'd expect to come with Christianity. I'm not a gospel singer. I'm not your worship leader. Right. I'm not. 
So do folks understand your, I'm not going to call it your brand of Christianity, because Christianity has a brand, but right. your, how you manifest it, how you wear it? Um, a lot of people don't really ask, you know, Jamaican, Jamaicans are, I think, it's a cultural thing. So me sitting here is sitting here as the writer, is sitting here as the producer, is sitting here as the actress, is sitting here as the owner and operator of a real estate business, mm -hmm. is sitting here as the, the co-founder of Reach One Child. Um, so everything I do is unto God. I lead from that space because it's love, but I can't make Jesus more famous <laughs> than Jesus is already famous, right? <laughs> so. People sometimes don't necessarily come to me to ask, you know, is this a new shift? Is this a different Shireen? What can we expect? People, don't, people sometimes don't really ask. And even in the church, I don't really get bothered. I think I am clear because the Bible says, seek God, I seek God. And when I get clarity about something, I do it. So if the song comes out sounding like it's going to inspire you, like a victory or an up all night that is more let it go and release, it comes out like that. And then if it comes out like no peace in, the, um, no peace in war, and I'm talking about more sociopolitical stuff, then I'm going to talk about that. So I, because I, I don't work in those bubble and boxes, I don't know that people necessarily place me in them. And even if they do, I'm going to constantly shatter that because <laughs> I set the boundaries. You set yeah, the I boundaries. Set, I set the boundaries in terms of well, God sets the boundaries, but I am, I'm not going to live in somebody's space because it makes them comfortable. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do what God tells me to do. Gotcha. Yeah. Your relationship with God became a lot more rock solid when your dad passed. So I, I started the journey before daddy passed. So he would have witnessed, you know, yeah, this, 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 this is me. And it's not for anybody. It's for me, me and God. Um, but when my dad passed, I think... A, a lot of things, you know, you, you start thinking about your own mortality. Like if, if you were to go tomorrow, you don't want to miss that mark. But you, you negotiated with him initially. You Initial, said, yes, you said because if you make him well. <laughs> right. And that what? was two years before. Okay. So that wasn't even the year he passed. That was two, two years, years before, before he was sick. And That's I remember, I said, no, 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 you, 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 you can't. You, you. I said, God, uh -uh. we're not, we're not do the show them on the Grammys and the things where you need to see it. So I say. If, if you make my father well, you have me. Oh, no, don't, oh, no, don't make them deal with God, okay? No, hold on <laughs> to that. Because you made him well. Well, well, he did. <laughs> what happened after that? We'll talk to Shereen on the other side about the rest. I'm so glad she's here. We're back with Sim Soul after this. Cool. Thanks. All right, we're back with Shireen Anderson here. Um, so you made a deal with God. He said, God, you know, we've been friends from a long time ago. Um, I was raised strictly in your church. Right. Mm, Very a little bit, but if you make my dad well, I'll walk with you. Yeah. And you said, don't make them deal with God because what happened after that? Because God may hold you to it. You know, we, we have to understand that sometimes our purpose and our calling, God's will is God's will. Like, you just, you can't really go around that. You understand? It's like if you're in a car and the car going in the wrong direction, what does a little voice come and say? Recalculating. <laughs> so in life, we're constantly doing these recalculations. And at some point, God is going to say, well, this is where I need you. My thing is, when you are in the entertainment industry, I think maybe... And I understand now from a spiritual perspective, it doesn't seem hip to a lot of people to be able to say God or Jesus. So what they do is you have to choose. You may dumb it down a bit to say, oh, well, I'm an artist and I want to be a superstar and I want to be a rock star. But the reality is every single talent I have, God gave me. And even the things that I discovered after coming to Christ were things he gave me. I mean, going out into business, starting a company, hiring people. That was not my agenda. You understand it? That, that really wasn't on my agenda. And even where he'll take me, because I don't define myself, as you say, Shereen the singer, mm -hmm. not sing. Mm -hmm. It's just the vehicle he's using to get his, his purpose across. And yeah. I'm cool with that. What happened when dad got well? When dad got well, then, then everything was all right, because now I'm well. Um, and then a, a year after he got well, 
there were other things in my life that I was like, I'm not really so sure what I go on. Because I'm out, like my friends will tell you, oh, she's the philosophical one. She's going to be giving you encouragement, she's reading. And I said, no, I said, all right, I'm going to make my promise, a time. I started first by saying, all right, church online. And then one of my friends then bad me up. He said to me, listen, cut out that foolishness. Like, you need to go in a place where actual people are, are doing it. Like, them, them, them really praising God, worshiping God, and, and find you there. And um, so I did. Went all the way. I mean, my mother cried. She cried. The day I said, Mommy, this is it. You know, she cried. You don't think I call her, tell her I get married or have babies or something but, like but that. But this was your, I mean, everybody in your family was, is Christian? Pretty much. So you were essentially like walking into the fold. Your sister, your mom. My mom, my sisters. And before daddy passed, I didn't realize how much he knew about God and how just spiritual he was. Mm -hmm. And he gave his heart to God mm -hmm. before he died. So there are just different things. You continue to see the goodness of God at different stages in your life when you don't even realize it was God that was taking you through that. Well, you yeah. say to me that you grew up in very, very humble beginnings yeah, man. in East Kingston. Yeah. Um, from uh, Rock, Rockford, Rockford. Mm -hmm. then to Nannyville. Nannyville. Yeah, Nannyville. Right? You, you, you saw a lot. Too much. You saw too much. Yes. Jamaican kids are traumatized. Let me just put it this way. You know, when you live in the inner city, there's a lot you hear that you shouldn't hear at six or seven. You know what curfews are. And when you have zinc roof and man around upon the roof, a jump over, the, you know what it is. You know what the danger could be if you were caught outside in crossfire. You knew when there was a curfew in the area and... You know, then they said the men can't leave the community. So that, that I experienced at like six, seven. And I was always kind of a little bit, I don't want to say ahead, but I understood a lot very early. young, very, very mm -hmm. early. Mm -hmm. um, so that creates fear and it creates tension and you seek for stability and, and, and safety and environments where you don't feel like you constantly have to negotiate that as you do what you're here to do. And that fueled two things in you. Mm -hmm. One, big dreams. Oh, yeah. You're because you decided, <sighs> you know, that last time living in that tenement yard. Oh, that, no, that was, I have to give this. Like, I remember being very young after we moved to this house on Winwood Road. And there was a run-in with the landlord's sister, I believe. The woman was most embarrassing. And on one of her things, she... That's me, really, just, 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 just really loud. And she threw, may have been a pebble, may have been a rock, and it broke the glass. And I think what I remembered most was when your parents are young and trying, they can only do what they can do. And I vowed to myself, is either I'm gonna build some buildings or buy enough house. <laughs> And so, I, so when I started Poor really? Living, that's what I remembered because that was like, okay, you still have a work to do in this area of real estate because I don't know if I like the tenement yard situation, but I understand that it's some people's reality. Mm -hmm. And um, so helping people find their homes also became very important to me because of that incident. And I've never forgotten it. But parents young and trying, yeah. mom having to, to leave. We left. Well, yeah. We, we, yeah. yeah. Um, but but still saying to me that you never knew you never knew need no. like there was nothing in your life that you needed that God did not provide exactly right and like my love tank I tell people this is full I do not know what it is like to grow up without your dad in a house I don't know that I don't know what it is like to say mommy not there we may have not had like all the money in the world but you see, I call it your imagination. Think about it like a woman's womb. Just like you have a child, you see, our imagination, we were always told to dream big. Like even, even if you get $100, $200, and they take it to grand market for the Christmas, we'd sit down and pour the sorrel and pretend like we were living nice, and you talk to the dolls, and <laughs> I would put my cousins to sit down, and I'm like, no, 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 we're having church, and I'm the preacher, and you're going to listen. or I'm the, Like, we dreamed really, really big. So then even when I moved on to places like Excelsior Primary and, and Ashe and we started seeing more of the world, even though we didn't have all the physical stuff people had, all me could I see was myself on stage. There was nobody that was too big. 
Even when you never know where far in am, I never got the airport and know where plane look like. I just knew that Jamaica was not going to be just it. Mm -hmm. So I, my brain was just always seeing more and seeing different. Well, good yeah. for you because there was more in your future. And we're going to talk about that more and what came along with the more yeah. after we take this break. More with Shireen when we come back. Don't go. Guys, we are back with Shireen, and we are talking about your quest for more, to see more, to do more. Performing was a big part of that. It's a vehicle that kind of changed your life entirely. Um, but you almost never even made that Kathy Levy audition when you went, because well, I didn't. I you didn't I, go. I went, and I was like, I don't, I don't think I fit in here. And I don't remember how much money I had in my pocket. But the the story behind that is Karen, my sister had worked her summer job at this law firm and given me the money, she gave me the money to go up there and do the audition. And I just, you just never feel like... Why you turned back? You went and no, you no, saw no, who just, was there. Yeah, I'm like, this you is saw what quite, they were wearing. this is quite uptown. This girl don't fit right here. Let me just talk, <laughs> please. This girl don't fit right here. And I just, I didn't do it. And it wasn't until I started going to Walmart's that they said there was an audition now for Ashe because the group had kind of split. And there's this girl, Ravletta Fraser, who I, I saw her. on TV, her soul I rest in her. peace. She sang the mo just the most beautiful voice. I said, anywhere that girl lady, I this saw me want go. And then myself and my little cousin went and we auditioned for Ashe and there is this kind of history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you made some serious history though because um, but before I get there, I so see you have on jean shoes. Oh. Jeans are, denim is a big thing for you. Huge Shari. thing for me. Denim is a big thing for you. Keeps me grounded. Because you could not afford denim. We could not afford to buy denim from the store. When we were in Asia, part of our uniform, I'd say, to perform was you'd have a t-shirt, depending on what we were doing. But everybody had denim. Mommy and daddy just didn't have the money to go to the store. Like we take it, we take it lightly to buy a pair of denim. So my cousin who was a tailor at the time, what they did was they bought the denim and had him make the pants. Now it, it was well tailored, well made. But you know you just want that come from foreign smell like the barrel <laughs> <laughs> jeans that just fit. We we I well I did. I, I, I didn't have that. So for me. Denim, I can't go wrong in denim. I'll always wear denim. The denim, I buy more it. denim than anything. Even your anything. PE uniform, you never had oh, to make it. PE uniform, I remember. And this is where family is so important. We could not afford to buy the PE gear from Excelsior. And you know, they don't necessarily pressure the kids who can afford or can't afford. So what we did, I remember, I was in Dr. Bird, and there was a sports day coming <laughs> up, and my sister got the green T-shirt, and she took a marker to draw the bird on the back to say, this is Dr. Bird, and I wore that t-shirt with pride. And that's been many eras in my life. It would come back to serve me even in my career because you may start, I'm looking at a female artist, but you don't have no clue what it takes to just get styling right here, right? You, I know I can sing, I know I can write, but you may not have everything for the styling. And we used to just do random things like repurpose the old denim, repurpose the old clothes, maybe go into a goodwill and take something and wear that on the stage. You just had to get really resourceful and creative. And yeah. it didn't bother me because of everything that had happened mm -hmm. in my past. And, yeah. and by that time, your gifts were literally like making a lot of room yeah. for you. Um, there Holy. came this, it's funny, you had been performing with Asha, you started to travel. Um, you know, here comes this movie. Dance Hall Queen, and you do this movie and you do it well, and it brings you critical acclaim. Mm -hmm. But you were still Shireen yeah. taking the 83 bus yes. to school. Yeah. And a part of it is that could have also not happened if I bring it back. When I, when I auditioned for and you know, got the role of Tanya in Dance Hall Queen, it wasn't really met with a lot of support from my high school at the time I was going to Walmart's, um, it, it caused a bit of a upster. And um, we didn't really, I didn't have a good time there because of talent. Yes. I remember first, like in first form when I auditioned for the choir, I didn't get on the choir because I was told I didn't have that thing in my voice that they were looking for. 
So just imagine somebody kind of poking a, a, a nail in your balloon, or then I guess it's not that good, even though you're coming from Excelsior Primary, winning stuff with JCDC, choir, drama, everything. So I was a bit deflated. And then by the time Dancehall Queen came now, that was a whole other issue. That's when I saw, in my opinion, the politics behind the industry. And if you don't really have people who are strong to argue on your behalf, where it could ultimately lead. Um, but now that I can look back at it, I can honestly say it was just perception. Maybe, maybe the powers that be at the time just truly didn't understand what me being in a film like Dancehall Queen would have meant for just creative people coming out of the institution. But, um, but it's good. It's, but it's here's good. the thing. That quiet situation would be something that dogged you for a long time. Yeah. Like it literally made you question whether or not I could. Whether or not you were good enough. But not long. Not for long. So Miss Grant. So I don't know. I'm kind of like a, I don't want to say a teacher's pet. I have, like, if I cling to somebody, it's for a reason. And I'm realizing that now looking back. Since our talk, I'm realizing that. So, like, Anne Grant was my music teacher in primary school. And I remember when I called to say, Miss Grant, we never get in the choir. Like, this is kind of disturbing and odd to me. She said, you don't worry about that. Like, the, so the encouragement that came from my primary school teacher made me feel all right. And then audition for Ashe. I wasn't just singing, no. I was getting paid to do it. So I'm like, well... Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Paid to do it, but you're paid to the dance hall queen. Mm -hmm. um, you'd eventually do one love. Yeah. You'd do school abroad and come home. And you still had people who had to be taking you to shows because you couldn't even own a car. Right. So, so right. a lot of us would have seen you like doing all these things and think, you know, Shireen has got it like right. that. And, and I love that you bring that up. I think one of the biggest misconceptions in entertainment is that once someone is in a project, you're just making a killing. Not true. You know, the, just all the cycles that a film goes through, yeah, you're paid to do it, and then if it does anything at the box office, it's one thing, but then it also depends on that contract Correct. that was signed. Um, by the time I got to college, I we did One Love, you know, it started under, like my manager who I met in high school would have given me books on the music industry. It started understanding residuals and royalties and, and the contract for One Love was definitely better than the contract for Dancehall Queen. But why I love Dancehall Queen is that Dancehall Queen created the platform for them to even consider me for One Love. It was on the set of Dancehall Queen where the directors heard me singing that they realized that I could sing. Mm -hmm. So when the second movie came up, it's like, nah, she already has the experience See if that girl would be available for this. And I went in, auditioned, and the rest is kind of history. It's history. Yeah. Um, she is a star, but she hates stardom. Yeah. We're going to talk about that on the other side. Um, more with Shereen after this. Back with Shireen, everybody, talking about your rise to stardom, the movies, the singing, all of it. But you say stardom was never in your eyes. And you always found celebrity boring. Absolutely what? boring. <laughs> it's just boring. Like, why would you want to know who somebody dating or where they're going to hang? Like, that is not important to me. It is really not important to me. I feel like, and it may sound a little bit, judge me if you will, it's just like fast, like to me, <laughs> like if, if you can't sing, that's what I'm coming to you for. Like you're great at what you do. That's what I want to see you in your element where you are. Yeah, I don't need to see a side of you that is different if that's not the side that you, you want to share with the public. You, you understand gotcha. what I'm saying? And I don't consider it caged or controlled. I don't. I see it as you being you mm -hmm. and that's what you're good at. So I should be pouring into that. And that's, that's why, why you've it. left a lot so private. Oh, yeah. Including your relationships. Oh, yeah. Oh, because yeah, you girl. said growing up and being in studios and you've seen a lot of women go through a lot of things. Too much. Too publicly. Because then too much. Because, too much. They, because they too much too were revealed. So you say, Simone, I have my relationships in private. I heard in private. I healed in private. private girl. And it's going to be the way that you move forward. It is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> it is um, what it is. 
You are currently not in a relationship. Okay. You say you are waiting on God. Right. Because he's going to give you the right person. If he right deems time. that that's what he wants to do. Simone, let, let me put it this way. When you are following God, you know, and the Bible says a living sacrifice, we don't understand what that means. So I didn't just put my career on the table and say, God, do what you will. I put Shireen on that table and you say. You say you left everything at the altar. Everything is at the altar. And, and it what is does not mean? easy. Yeah. Meaning I am giving God control over my life to direct ship and order my steps. And I'm telling you that when I make the decisions, they're nowhere as good as when I am led by God to do something and I see the result. Case in point, something like a victory and how I'm told to put it out, how I'm told to release it, what I'm told to do. I mean, Simone, like my dreams and my, but my conversations and the time that I spend in the word with God reveals things to me that I can't say in public. It saved me from bad deals. It shifted me out of bad contracts and transactions with people. Things that I know, had I not been obedient to God in a certain way, it would work. And I also realized as a female that relationships just tend to be a big distraction if mm -hmm. it's not the right person. And you said you didn't have the wisdom of spirit to choose the right people all along, but you have it now. No. Spirit of discernment. And no. as such, there is nobody who you will ever introduce in public as your boyfriend. You said no boyfriend gets it. <laughs> yeah, you say so Simona. Someone stop draw me no, out. <laughs> no, no. No, I am not going to introduce a grown man in public as my boyfriend. Why? Man just for be man. It's either you want to be, put it this way. I will not give ho um, boyfriend husband privilege. Hmm. I am not backtracking to have these conversations in public when somebody determines that you want to say bye. Not going to happen. No. And as I said to you before, it's not that we haven't had these in the past, but I think you should learn from things in the past to move forward. And it's not that any of these people weren't good people, but it means I wasn't good for their purpose, and they are clearly not the person that God chose for me to walk along what I need to do. Because you're not just getting an artist, you're getting Shireen. Mm -hmm. And I am not dumbing down no part of me what God sent me here for come do, me a go do. Your mother told That's you that it. she don't ever think you're going to get married. Well, They're, she used to, I, I don't know how she feels. <laughs> people looking on saying, why aren't you married? Where are your kids? What are, right. You're not, a, you're, you're, you're not. No, and, and I don't know. I think if we understand marriage from a biblical perspective, we understand covenant and we understand marriage is one work. But also know that if God calls you to marriage, it's because he can do something through that marriage, not just for you and the husband, but in work is in purpose. Like, so when it happens, it happens. Mm -hmm. There are things that I know. There are things the Holy Spirit continues to tell me. What's some of not in public? So now does I forgot what you and see? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's on by. But you say, though, that you're not lonely. Despite what people, am. Because you are surrounded by, your family is like incredible. And your friends. Manager, sister. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a like a proper, proper village. And a proper village of like minded people. Yeah. From your bestie come right down. All the way down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I'm I'm good. And 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 I know typically this show is so, you know. But I am good. Simone, they pour into me, I pour into them. Um my niece, my nephews, I'm, I am blessed. People are healthy in my life. Listen, like after COVID, me tell people, they don't need much to be happy. We have health, yeah. we got everything. Yeah, we have everything. everything. You have enough, including, as you good. said, good people around you. Yes, yes. It is time for yes. Good Vibes. Run it, Laurie. I am so, so proud of your achievement over the years. There was no doubt in my mind then that you were destined for stardom as you chartered your way through your primary education at Excelsior. Shereen, you are always my star and will continue to be my star. And I pray that God will continue to order your steps, my dear. Love you, love you, love you. You gave me my first scholarship, my first contract, my first reflex hammers. And I just want to say thank you for 
always being there for me. You have become more than a scholarship donor, been a mentor, a friend, and even sometimes a godmother. The times when you prayed for me, I will never forget. I benefited from your music, from your philanthropy, from your ministry, and from your kindness. You're a woman of God. And you show me that in so many ways. And I really appreciate you. I'm happy that I got the experience to witness first on your drive, your discipline, your dedication, your fearlessness, and most of all, how selfless you are. And I really admire that about you. And, you know, thank you for being an amazing friend. Thank you for always supporting me. And, you know, thank you for always giving me an opportunity. And P.S., I know you don't like surprises, but nevertheless, you know, we have to come through and bless you because, you know, you're that kind of person and you deserve your flowers. Sharing is just awesome to work with. Our creativity, our work ethics. Just keep making great music for people to listen to and be inspired by all over the world. You know where I do? Do your craft, do it when nobody does it like you and nobody know you like you, Shereen. Just keep making music. Go on. Go on, my girl. The bad news is that time flies, girl. But there's good news. You're the pilot. You define your life. Don't let other people define your life or write your script. It's already ordained by God. You're doing a very, very good work. And don't you come down, my sister. I love you, love you dearly. God bless you. God got you. God brought us together for a purpose. You encourage, you inspire. You're a counselor. You have a giving heart. You're a phenomenal woman. Because I've watched you grown over the years from strength to strength. And one word, one word come to mind. You're a blessing. I want to take the time out to big up Sherin Anderson. She's one of the most talented female singer to emerge out of Jamaica. I just want to big her up. I'm a kind of to continue on the journey that you want. You are so talented, you have a good heart. I love you so much, Queen. Continue to strive, continue to do great things in the music. Continue on this journey that you want. I remember that Chuck friend, I love you dearly, endlessly from the bottom of my heart. See? I would not be me right now where I am without your help, your advice. Over the years when I felt like giving up, you have been there consistently pushing me forward. You've been a sister, you've been a friend, you've been a mentor, you've been a boss. You have worn so many hats in my life and any little opportunity me can get for remind you, like my offer remind you that your purpose is bigger than your physical size. <laughs> I love you sis. God has granted you favor amongst men. I'll never forget when you said that to me. I value, respect, love, and appreciate not just you being a friend, but a sister. Sherry, you are beyond talented, gifted, knowledgeable, wise beyond your years. And I just want to say, continue to fly like eagle, soar like dove. Nobody can hold you are one of my dearest and closest friends. You are absolutely a sister. You are kind and faithful, inspirational, and your ambition is laced with just pure authenticity and consideration. You are an amazing woman. And I am sure that all the blessing that God has in store for you is just going to pour on and on even more. You are faithful, you are loyal, you are confident, you, you know, I tell you, I honor the grown you up on. You have so many values that is just simply aspirational. And for me, you're walking wisdom and motivation. Just keep doing what you need. You love me, sis. Thank you for the virtuous woman that you are. Thank you that your heart is kind 
and your integrity is intact. Thank you that your honesty is one of my greatest, greatest uh, character trait that you have and that you are a woman of your word and that you call it as you see it. Thank you that you've always been one of the people that I can trust uh, to have my back and to speak the truth to me at all times and to hold me even accountable in our friendship and our sisterhood. Thank you for your heart of compassion, for caring for others. Thank you for how you see the world and how you want every person that you encounter to experience a shift of growth, not just spiritually, but thank you, my darling. Be blessed, be well, and listen, we're still out here. Warm way or warm. All right? Love you. Bye. The world, I believe, don't even recognize or know who Sherin Anderson is. The purpose that is placed on your life, they will know who Sherin Anderson is. So I say, go and possess the land, my sister. You are not built to break. Blessings overflow. We do not mind criticism, we do not mind negativity, but what we do know, no one can hold you down. Watch you girl, wear the crown. God bless you. I appreciate you very, 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 very much. When we were growing up, there were things that were done that I really didn't understand. And what this means is when you used to sing for us and tune up your voice, you used to make some outbursts like, oh yeah, oh yeah. And really and truly, I really never understand what was happening. So I used to ask you to be quiet. And I'm asking you, please to forgive me because mommy used to tell us to leave our little daughter alone. So please forgive us for our ignorance. I've never seen anyone as creative as you are. We love you, Shireen. It will never stop. We are blood, we are family. And this is one blood and family that will stay together. Mwah. I share, watching your growth over the years, I could tell that you were going to be an inspirational, influential, motivational young lady, you know. I could tell that you were going to be the first sequence interrupter in this family to change things. I am so proud of you. Just continue to listen to the voice of the Lord, right? And whatever he says to do, just do it. Love you, baby. Did your mom just say you were a sequence interrupter? Mm. Simone? Wow. My family has never shied away from making declarations over my life. And what I thank God for is the team solid. The team solid. Solid, solid, solid. God good. God go all the time. Every time I'm good. Soon come mm. back. Goosebumps. Bring back everybody. Interrupt. Jeez. Oh. folks final segment with um shireen shireen you say you've been living up a, a renewal of your mind Have look to. like a spirit and body thing too but um that has led you to do some soul work mm -hmm. because of soul wounds Spoke to me to about soul wounds. Mm -hmm. what do you describe as soul wounds and how important are those to putting you on the path where you are now, healing those. Right. So healing is so important because <laughs> how we view the world have a lot to do with the, you know, what we've been through. And to me, like just the lens that you see the world through. Now, you may have, if I think about all the setbacks and the problems and the things that didn't work, it could almost make me not move forward. So when I decided to follow Christ, we know you're, a born, you're born again, you have a new spirit. My body may not look much different, but how I walk out my Christianity has a lot to do with my mind. The Bible says, a man think it, so is he. So I have to now find what is my identity in Christ. Not how the world define me. Not how the rest of the world would want me to go or to tell me what to do or how to, to view the world. But how does God see me? Mm -hmm. You understand? So renewing on my mind is going to help me to walk out my Christian journey. 
And, 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 and that's kind of essentially what I mean when I say renewal. But not just me and make up something or say something positive and motivating and encouraging to no end. It's like, again, if I go back to scripture, God said before the earth, him did not know who me is. I was already knitted in my mother's womb. Me sitting down having this conversation with you was okay. already done. Mm -hmm. It was ordained, it was mm -hmm. done. So me want to know who me was at the beginning. A lot of people that's watching have soul wounds and they don't know. Right. I well, don't know how to fix it either. If this triggers something, <laughs> it's also a sign. You know, you see the world, the glass half empty or half full. That is it. We only think about the anger that I feel when somebody... And, and, and all of these are just signals. God loves us so much that he may give you signs to show you other things that need to be released. And it's not you're, not... you're not in this permanent place of bliss. That's not what this is. It's a journey. You pick up your cross and you go, mm -hmm. you understand? Mm -hmm. But it's just being able to do the work and you can't essentially just get up and fix you, but you're gonna have to do something. Start by this, I mean, reading the Bible. I've found that to be one of the most therapeutic things. Just even on my Christian walk, what is expected of me? And it's brought me peace, mm -hmm. peace like I can't explain. I can't pour into you from an empty place. So mm -hmm. if I don't have nothing to, if I don't fix something, then I can't pour that into you. I can't teach you what I haven't been through, you know? Also, the importance of coming out of the prison by freeing yourself from other people's prism mm -hmm. of you. Important. Freedom is important. But I am no longer a slave <laughs> to anybody, whatever. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? It's important, again if you know who you are. And I'll give you an example. If we put a little bird on this pretty blue rug that you have right here, right? And let's say this was the boundaries. And then the gate is open, but the birds still keep flying around it. Sometimes the gate and the opportunities, it open. It's like God, I give you a gift for freedom, but you're choosing still not to take it. Why? Because you get so used to running around this carpet that you're still in the maze, even though freedom is available to you. God dead one more time on the cross. And now go back, God dead over and over and over again. <laughs> it is done. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is done. Let's talk about wings under your feet as we come down <laughs> to affirmation. We spoke about your song. If you have not listened to Shereen Anderson's Up All Night, please go and listen your song, you know. <laughs> to that song. That is my song. And I told you what I saw when I heard that song. And you said something to me and the two of us, for about two minutes. <laughs> Just couldn't kinda. speak because I, were, I was in tears and you were. And you said that song is about wings under my feet. Because that's what God would have shown me. The song says, um, Now's your chance, the door's wide open. You will break free from everything that's held you bound. It's a now get up like a champion. There's a fighter left in you. But here's a kicker. You've already won. You've already won. When I wrote that song, it was in the middle of COVID, all right? The middle of COVID and yeah, you live alone and you're worried you hear people pass away by themselves in their apartment. And the one thing God would have reminded me, him say, yeah, but no matter how long you wrestle with this all night, no matter who else wrestle, hear what? I am up all night and I'm with you in this fight. So whatever your fight is, God is up all night, and he's with you in the fight. I don't have anything more to say. She said it all. She God said good. it all. And that's the word that we leave you with tonight, is that it's already done. Victory. Victory. <laughs> victory. victory. <laughs> you already have victory. Thank you, baby. You're welcome, Appreciate honey. Thank you, you for the opportunity. Here. Yeah, man. Thank so you. nice to have Thank you. It was time. And when it's time, it works the way it ought to work. Thank you. And speaking of, it's time for affirmation. So let's wrap the show. Let's go. Right, oh, so physical pain, it's painful. But the most painful wounds are the ones we cannot see. The ones we don't sometimes know about. Or to be truthful, sometimes we know but we ignore it or we dismiss it because we figure if no one else can see them, we can save face, suffer in silence, right? Everything's good. But we're not realizing that we're actually doing ourselves more harm by not giving our hurt 
the attention it deserves and therefore delaying our healing or making it actually impossible. Soul wounds are the worst. They are deep and they are gaping. That is the bad news. But the good news is that with work, those wounds can be healed and must be if we are to live our best lives. If you want that for yourselves, you've really got to roll up your sleeves and work on you in the same way that you would work on that sprained ankle or that injured knee, right? Because physio can fix that and make you walk well again. But those soul wounds, they will stop you in your tracks. So God, work and time. Work on your soul and everything else will be fine. Tonight we are affirming, I am committed to physio for my soul, so my soul can again be whole. And that is our soul food and our show for this evening. Thank you for watching everybody. We are back next week with another story of the power of the human spirit. Until then, every blessing, and please remember to count your blessings. Good night.